What is up, everyone? Grante here. Welcome back to the show. And today we're going to be looking at the 2022 3D printing mergers and acquisitions market and looking forward to some predictions to 2023. Let's look over here at this article from 3dprint.com, the voice of 3D printing, and look first at this chart, which shows M&A activity by quarter from July 2021 to October of this year. Now, obviously down here, you can see that there was a significant amount of deals even in the last two quarters of 2021, but that really faded out into 2022. There was almost nothing in Q1, just double that in Q2 and kind of evened out all across the board, still significantly less than in the previous year. Before we get started, let's notice the trend from about 2013-14 to today. In 2013 and 14, we saw a lot of patents expiring, so new startups developing their own proprietary machines. Those were almost instantly gobbled up by bigger players like Stratasys or 3D Systems or even Xerox. They wanted that new development that was coming out, but now the trend is going to be towards bigger M&A deals, bigger organizations merging with each other. Let's start with Stratasys, and their target right now is Nano Dimension. Nano Dimension, um, they do 3D printed circuit boards, and that aligns pretty well with Stratasys's Polyjet line. Electronics 3D printing, highly desirable in defense, space, medical, electronics. So if Stratasys did get their hands in the pie of Nano Dimension, it would be pretty great. Let's point out that Nano Dimension, they were previously had they previously had a lot of support from Arc Investment Group and Kathy Wood screwed that up, so um, they're hurting. Looks like they got a pile of cash though. So this would be pretty great for Stratasys again, but TBD. Next one we're gonna look at is the Xerox system. And this was their LMX metal printing system. They had a laser sintering machine, and this was pretty widely accepted by users in the Navy. The technology is valuable, but Xerox has lost the ability to control that product line and they're looking to sell off. And one of the biggest buyers is 3D Systems, who you guys may know as being a historic developer for new methods. 3D Systems does have a relationship with Xerox already um, through an acquisition of the Solid Ink division in 2014, but this would be a good buy for 3D Systems. So let's keep an eye on Xerox and 3D Systems to see if they can get a better offering for the US military, the Navy in particular. Another organization 3D Systems has their eyes on is Enscript, and we'll look at Enscript in a second, but let's look at some history of 3D Systems. They do have interest in bioprinting, and it has not stopped investing in new technologies that complement their current products. I did a video about three months ago about their acquisition of DP Polar, which is a German company. They made a rotary 3D printer, which was made for high volume. They had a really high throughput. You could get a lot of mass done. Enscript, though, they do solder paste and adhesives to living tissue. This is bioprinting, and it would be pretty sweet for 3D systems to add that to their cadre of capabilities. Not only does Enscript have the bioprinting, but it's got a pretty good post-processing system as well of robotic picking and micro-milling and including plastic extrusion in there for better sealant, whatever the biomaterial is attaching to. Just another good idea for 3D systems to add to their portfolio. How now we're going to get into some of the bigger uh, large org organization eats larger organization. And the first of these is looking at how GE might stack up to buy 3D systems. Um, if you guys are unaware about General Electric, they have multiple business units. You know, they got aerospace, they got healthcare and GE additive, which really serves their aerospace division. Now, if GE wanted to continue to stay relevant in manufacturing, it would be pretty smart of them to get into the game even further by getting a large organization. If this was five years ago, I'd say GE would be just fine buying up a small new developer and going for a value investment. But right now, that's not on the market. All those little developers have r really been eaten up by larger organizations like Stratasys, 3D Systems, okay? GE could do really well to merge their information, their supply chain with 3D Systems. That would be a powerhouse of an organization. Let's move on. Okay, GE, one pillar of industry. Another big name is HP Hewlett Packard. They have their own powder-based process, but, and it's a leader in polymer printing. 
Um, but if they did partner up with Stratasys, who is one of the primary manufacturers of industrial 3D printing machines, that would be a force to contend with. We'd have to look more into the numbers here and see what, if that is any more of a value investment or just really trying to get information and systems to align. But again, this is the trend. There's not many more smaller 3D print developers to be um, acquiring. These large organizations now have to merge with each other. Finally, the last part of this article is about Apple. And apparently Apple is already doing some electronics 3D printing, but they're really looking at getting Optomech, who has an aerojet technology, technology at scale for 3D printing chips, circuits, antennas, and other elements. That would really help Apple secure their supply chain here domestically in America. That would provide them with a lot of good electronics and components on demand, which they could even pass to that pivot their product line on a dime. If they needed to change production, 3D printing offers that. You can change production on a dime with little or no cost for retooling. But I really hadn't heard much about Apple getting into the 3D printing game before I looked at this article, so that's a, uh, I don't have much comment about that, but it would be cool to see. Aside from that, we kind of did see the trend of how these larger organizations now have to start working with each other. The cooperation might be the name of the game rather than competition at the high level. The information that's up there, if these organizations are sharing it, they can probably deliver a much better product to the user or to other developers at the end of the day. But what do you guys think? If you got any more eyes into the industry or you're following this news, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment, like, subscribe, and bell to get new content, and I'll see you guys in 2023. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.